Uh, so in this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at uh, creating Rhino animations. Uh, to do that, I'm using the Barcelona Pavilion model that's uh, available for download. Um, it's in the links of the description of the video. Uh, and I've also added two things. Uh, one, uh, a line just here, and another line inside of the space here. And these are going to be what are essentially rails for my camera. Uh, other software can use uh, kind of keyframing, so I could set my roof position at frame 1 here and frame 30 there, and between 1 and 30 it would move. Uh, Rhino can't do that. You can do that with Bongo. You can do that kind of with Grasshopper, but it's a little, um, a little less sophisticated than some other software. But what Rhino can do um, is available under the, if I right click and go show toolbar, the animation setup. There's four basic animation types. One is a uh, sun study. So if we click the sun study, I could set up uh, a longitude and a latitude and say, like, you know, okay, we're somewhere around Madrid. It's not Barcelona, but we'll say it's close enough. Um, you can change the uh, north angle here. Um, let's say I modeled my model wrong and I actually put north the other way, so it can move the angle there. I pick a day that I want to investigate, a start time and an end time, and how many minutes between each frame. So right now this is a 12 hour time frame, a, fr uh, a rendering every 30 minutes, so that would give me 24 images. It's saying that there'll be a JPEG, um, I'm doing a full render, and I'm rendering this viewport, viewport number three. And then it labels each one animation one, animation two, animation three. So that's one type. The other type here on the far side is a 360 degree turntable. So if I click this, I can say, well, you know, 250 frames, I'm going to go clockwise around the whole thing. Um, if I get my other toolbar, which is Animation Preview, open, it'll show me whatever animation I just set up. So if I hit play, you can see there it rotates 360 degrees around my model. Um, I can set it up again, and now this is centered on the view I already have. So there you go. Um, that would be our animation. The preview is always going to be done in wireframe. These other, we're doing an auto save real quick. These other two in the middle here are path based animations, like fly through animations. So if I say I'm going to map my camera to this curve there, I can say over 250 frames, move my camera from here to there. I'll say OK, and I can preview this one, and I'm just moving straight down the space. A more, you know, and, th and that's kind of a classical way of doing that. I'm going to hide my roof real quick. This other option is doing both the camera here and the camera target there. 250 frames again. I'll show my roof back and I'll preview this. Here I'm rotating essentially the camera so that I'm moving through the space while looking from this point to that point. The problem with these Rhino animations is that you can't um, kind of pile them together. I can't do a path animation and a solar animation at the same time. That is, unless I use a more advanced technique. Um, and thanks to uh, the forum on flyingarchitecture.com, I was able to find a uh, Python script that controls both camera location, uh, time of day, and uh, length of animation. So to do that, the first thing you have to do is set up a sun. And that's not a V-Ray sun or, or putting a light in, but if I type underscore sun, I can come in and uh, turn on the sun. Let's jump up to the top here. I want to turn on the sun, uh, and then I can set my location. We'll go back to Madrid, uh, set my time of year, although this is also controlled in the script, so we don't have to do that right now. Now that the sun is in there, I want to go into my V-Ray options. I'm using V-Ray to make the animation, and there's f uh, a few critical parts of uh, the V-Ray animation. One, under global switches, you have to put on a batch rendering. If you don't put a batch rendering, it'll do the first frame and then it'll crash. It won't work. The next is under my camera. I want a physical camera to be on. And knowing that this is going to be sometime during the day, because I, I did my underscore sun settings, um, right now it's around noon. So if I move into my space here and just do a quick preview and, um, by right clicking the render, I'm just previewing just a portion of it. I can see that um, I'm pretty close to exposure, the, the exposure I want. Maybe I could be a little bit brighter, so under my camera, maybe I'll drop this down to like 180 for my shutter speed. That's all you need to do for camera. Under output, 
I've done the, the typical thing, I get my aspect ratio and I lock it. And because this is just a preview, I'm using a very small size. If I wanted an HD animation, I'd want this to be 720 pixels or larger. 1080 or greater would be you know, super high resolution. It will just take a long time. Um, you know, as soon as you get your rendering right, you're going to have to do a few hundred frames, which are you know, repeating that rendering. The next steps to look at are the type of rendering we're doing with the indirect illumination. Typically, this is set to brute force. Um, brute force is kind of the most time consuming. So I set mine to an uh, irritance map in light cache. Uh, and under my light cache, let's see here, I changed a couple th settings. One, I dropped this from 1,000 to 400. So that's uh, 400 subdivisions instead of 1,000. Um, and I also changed my sample size to 0 0.02. Uh, no, maybe it was always that. I forget uh, my number of passes I, I may have altered to. Let's see if I, if I put this back to just normal light cache, if it goes to default values. Nah, I kept my values. Um, but these settings seem to be working pretty well. Another thing that I did under light cache is under mode, I said I'm using a fly through. And I said on the end of my rendering, don't delete and auto save my light cache to a file. So I click this and, and I'm saving it to my desktop. What that does is it's going to run one light cache and then it's going to use that same light cache over and over again. So with those settings set up in V-Ray, uh, I can preview this animation one more time. I'm going to be moving along here. I know my exposure is pretty good. I know I've already got materiality in the scene. You can see some of it here. Um, I'm going to go in and, and load the Python script, which is also available for download in the description below. So if I type edit Python script and go file open, I'd open up this script. Um, if you're unfamiliar with Python or if you're unfamiliar with scripting, it's actually a, a fairly straightforward script, um, but you don't have to really know exactly why this is working to know that it's going to work. And all of this red text, these are prompts. So if I go to file run, it takes a second and it says, well, how many frames do you want? I'll say 200, but the default there is fine. What month? Um, September the ninth month would be fine. 23rd day, great. I'm going to say they give me an animation from 12 noon to 6 p.m., which is 18. Uh, I, I skipped that. This is the start hour, 12. Start minute, 0. End hour, 18. End minute, 0. So that's 1200 to 1800. Uh, and then it asks, you know, where do you want to put this file? I'm going to put it in a subdirectory here. And then it asks, you know, say, so give give the camera paths at this last step. If you don't give a camera path, it will just be a static camera view. But I'm going to take my camera here. I'm going to move my target there. And it's already off to the races. Uh, it's going to do one light cache here. Um, and if I set this up right, it should only then uh, do irritance maps and rendered images. Let's see if it does a light cache pass right now. It, it may. I'm not certain. Oh, it's still doing a light cache. So maybe I didn't get that set up quite right. Um, but this will go and it's going to do 200 frames. So it will take some time and between each frame it's adjusting the time ever so slightly, moving the camera forward and rotating our view. Uh, these are being saved out as JPEGs. I'm going to hit escape and eventually it should pop the script up here and it says, hey, you had an error, you press the escape key, which quit. And then what I have is a series of JPEGs that I made earlier um, and I can just kind of go through this. There's already a, you can see the sun kind of comes over uh, the edge of the wall there, which is pretty nice. And then you can see it fades away. So if I just hold down my arrow, I can see kind of the basic animation here. Um, there's another tutorial on the site on how to take a series of JPEGs in Adobe After Effects and turn them into a sequence. Um, most things play at 30 frames per second, so you have to think that if you want a minute long animation, you're going to need 30 times 60, which is 1800 frames, which will take some time, especially if each frame takes about a minute to render, you're looking at some hours of rendering. Um, but playing with those V-Ray settings will help reduce that time. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below, or you can always email me at c.k.mcadams at gmail.com. All the best of luck.